Hey guys, uh, Ishan with the Ego Club at UCI here, coming at you guys with a cool video today. Uh, I'm a computer science major, and this quarter I take a class which allowed me to write a simulation for a final project, and I figured, well, why not do it for Yu-Gi-Oh! And so I wrote a simulation for a Crusadia Guard Dragon deck, um, and here's a little, just a rough draft of what a sort of standard Crusadia Guard Dragon deck looks like. Um, so... I wrote for Crusader, I wrote the simulation for Crusader Guard Dragon because Crusader Guard Dragon is a relatively sort of straightforward combo deck and it's easy to simulate. It's easy to use computers to write rules to sort of judge how good a hand is in this deck. And so um, if you guys aren't familiar with the deck, here's a little, just a little overview of what the deck does and sort of how it works. Um, so this is the standard combo. This is actually, this turns out to be a very good hand and that's why I chose it for this footage here. Um, so I'm just going to show you how this combo works, and I'm going to explain to you some of the goals of the deck. And the goals are extremely important to understanding how the simulation works and how it ranks decks. And so, um, yeah, pay attention to those goals, would you? All right, so here we've got, we're going to be able to make Azathoth under our Crusadia Magius, and that's one of the sub-goals of this deck. I would say the first goal of this deck is just to be able to combo, just to not brick, right? But the second goal is to make Azathoth so we can use our Crusadia Magius and all our, all our, you know, our Elpi and our Spatha, all our stuff so that it goes uninterrupted, our Saryuja, right? So here our Magius is going to search our Drago. So those of you familiar, not familiar with how the combo works, then we go straight into a Spatha. This Spatha is going to allow us to move the LP that we summon to our zone, and then we are going to be able to use LP to summon a uh, Red-Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, and then Red-Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon will allow us to special a dragon back and make Saryuja, which is uh, very important for this deck because Saryuja allows us to complete our third goal, which is to draw a Kyoto Waterfront. Kyoto Waterfront is the Kaiju Field spell. You can see, see it when I'm looking through the deck here, and it allows us to search a Kaiju, and it has kaiju counters on it. And then our Saryuji can special out the Gamma Seal that we searched from our Kyoto Waterfront. And if anyone's ever faced a 5 counter Gamma Seal, they know that is a scary card to behold. Um, so that's one of the, I would say, consider it the third goals of the deck. So in review, right, there are three goals in this deck. And, and they're very important, right? So this is how we're going to rank our simulation. How good is this hand? So if a hand can combo, that's worth something, right? You want to be able to combo. If you're brick, you're going to lose, right? So that's an important goal, I would say. Uh, our second goal, I would say, is to make Azathoth, because, you know, we don't really want our opponent messing with us with their pesky hand traps. And so that's got, that's worth something too, right? So a hand that combos and makes Azathoth has got to be better than a hand that just combos, right? So we're actually, we're not just doing basic probability here. We're trying to figure out, you know, lots of different things with this simulation, not just, oh, uh, how often do I open a Crusader? No, we're actually trying to figure out if you can combo, if you can make an Azathoth if you can draw into a Kyoto Waterfront. And so here we're going to see the Pisty summon back the Red MD, which allows us to make another Saryuja. And then, spoiler alert, we will find a Waterfront on this draw. Um, sorry to sorry to spoil uh, the action here. And so those are our three main goals. And so, of course, if you can make Azathoth and have a Waterfront and combo, that's got to be worth more than making just an Azathoth, right? So we need some sort of way to score this. Uh, I'm just going to stop this combo. We can see where it's going. I'm going to show you an example of a hand where we just sort of brick, right? And this is this is worth. This is the worst, right? We want our deck to avoid this, and so we want some sort of way to say, well, this is worth nothing, right? This is worth the least amount. We don't want to brick at all, and so we're going to use this this concept of worth that we've created to sort of figure out how good our our decks are. And so here's an example of sort of the format that the simulation accepts decks and this is just a text file as you can see those are the line you know as you can see the nefarious archfiend and narifi they have dashes in front of their lines that means the the simulation is just to ignore those cards so we're going to run the simulation here with python this is a python program for all you computer scientists out there and it's going to it's going to run 100 test hands as you can see and it comes back with some results so it says oh we combo 92 percent of the time uh, we, we drew Waterfront 82% of the time, and we made Azathoth 54% of the time. Um, and so it's scored. All right, we have an average score, right? And so I'll talk about more about these these hands worth 0, hands worth 9, hands worth 12. But those were those are related to the goals we were talking about earlier. Now I'm going to run, you know, a 10,000 a 10, 000, uh, 10, 000 test hands. It's going to take a little bit longer. But we can see we get a little, a little more accurate numbers. So we've got a 91% combo, you know, 80% Waterfront. Here are some, you know, we've got, you know, Nine nine percent of our hands bricks, so they were worth zero. We'll get back to what these worth 
what, what, what it means to be worth something, how much is something worth. And that's how we're scoring our deck. So we can see that CG.YG has scored 13.311. And that's the number we're really concerned about because we need some way to rank these decks after we've done, you know, thousands upon thousands of test hands, right? And so actually I wanted to show you guys a little bit more in depth sort of inside what the code is doing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look, right? And we're going to see, we're going to change the deck up a little bit. That's the first thing we're going to do, right? So we're going to, uh, we're going to include these, these gigabyte nefarious and Nari finer deck. Actually, we're going to put three of each one in there just to see how it sort of affects our probabilities. And I want you guys to see sort of how changing the deck affects some of the, some of the probabilities. So here our deck's got 49 cards, we're running out of 10,000 test hands. Here we go. You can see that our, our combo percentage has dropped off a bit. Now we, we break like 3% extra. Our waterfront percentage is also lowered. And our Azadop percentage is also lowered. And you can see that this has affected our score for the deck, right? We, we complete our goals less. The deck scores less. Um, so this is just an example of sort of a bad deck. This is an inconsistent deck. It's got too much too much fluff and doesn't combo enough. I also wanted to show you guys sort of... I, I turned on the debug mode for you guys. So look at here. This is a hand. This is a five-card hand. And our, my program is telling me, well, this hand failed the combo. And as you can see, there's no Crusadias. This hand is complete brick. Here's another one. This hand failed the combo again. Remember, we're still using the 49-card deck, so there, there is a lot of uh, failure here. A lot of a more higher chance for a combo failure. Here's an interesting one, though. Our hand was able to combo. It was not able to make as a thought, but as you see the, the first eight cards uh, up there, it shows you that uh, this is because of the... Um, the Saryuja draws, that's that's where the Saryuja draws are sort of, and we're looking for a waterfront basically, but we, we can see we have a waterfront in our opening hand, so this hand was able to combo, uh, able to make waterfront, but not able to make Azathoth, and so it scores a little bit lower. Again, we're getting to those scores soon, I promise you, right? But I just want to show you sort of how this deck works. Here's another hand, we can see that we succeeded Azathoth using Crusadia Reclusion of the Crusader. We can see we have a Ranryu and a Quick Launch, which will allow us to summon two level fours and make an Azathoth. And so this is sort of, I want to get you, show you guys how the simulation works. Again, another hand where we fail. <laughs> Man, this deck kind of sucks, right? And so our simulation is able to tell us this, these sort of things, right? Here's another hand. We succeeded Azathoth, and we were able to find a Kyoto Waterfront, it looks like. Were we able to find a Waterfront? Uh, no, it doesn't look like we were able to find a Waterfront. Ooh, that's too bad. You can see that we don't, we don't see any Waterfronts in our top eight cards as well as our as our opening hand and, and, and i have accounted for searching uh like searching the water the red md and the draco and stuff like that okay so here is how we're gonna score these hands i want to i promised i would explain the score system here is how we're gonna do it well first we've got to do like an experiment right so we've got to set up the core of our deck these 30 six cards in our deck will never change because the truth is you know we start varying too many cards we're gonna have like thousands upon thousands of decks because there's just too many different combinations of cards we could use you can see at the bottom these are the cards we want to test those are the three familiars the set rotation I, I thought maybe set rotation might be good so i coded into my simulation maybe it helps us draw waterfront more maybe that's a good thing photon thrasher you can search it off rota um and then maybe make acid more often a lot of a lot of people debate should you play two rocket tracers this is sort of like the brilliant fusion garnet question right should you play duke garnets or only play one and just hope you never draw it so that's a question we're gonna we're gonna that's a variable we're gonna you know we're gonna play with should it be in the deck should it not be in the deck upstart goblin i only included this in decks if there were 39 cards because there's really no point point. and then of course the three familiars in the front those are the same thing they just special on some of themselves if you control a spellcaster basically and so we're gonna play with those a bit right okay so that's how our experiment's going to work. We're going to make tons of different decks. As you can see, I'm going to go into one of my folders here, uh, titled One, and you can see that these are all just decks, right? I, I've got like 87 of them or something like that. And remember, the dashes mean they're, they're ignored. So you can see this, these versions of the decks got like three of each familiar that we're testing, right? And some, and some dashes. Uh, and so, you know, that's just this specific deck. This, this, this specific deck we will experiment with, run lots of test hands on. This deck is very similar, um, except you can see it's got all the, the familiars there still, but it also has, you know, it has the set rotation, it has the dragon ravine. Remember, set rotation and dragon ravine are actually a package deal. There's no real reason you'd play dragon ravine without set rotation. Okay, so next up we've got uh, the scoring system that I promised I'd get to, right? And so... We had to sort of assign points to how good, you know, opening, I call it the basic combo, which means you open enough to play. And I valued that at nine points, and I sort of based everything else off the evaluation of this sort of thing, right? So the basic combo is worth nine. I valued Azala at three extra points. Uh, the reason I did this was because I felt it was worth one third of what just not breaking was. And I valued Waterfront at 4.5 points um, because I felt like, it was worth about half of not breaking was and you can sort of read this 
you can pause the video and read sort of my description about what all this means. But basically, you know, this is just stuff for, uh, you know, this is sort of me explaining how I came to these numbers. And so there are five categories of numbers, as you can see here. And depending on how much of the goals you meet, you get those. Okay, so next, how are we going to sort of do our experiment, right? How are we going to rank these decks? Well, first thing we we'll do is we're going to calculate the average score of the deck by running some number of test hands some number of times. So we're going to get a bunch of means of sample means. And after getting all of these sample means, I'll rank all the decks from worst to best, right? So it's like, okay, well, this deck got the worst average score. This deck got the best average score. And then we're going to give them points. So you say, okay, if you were the worst deck, you'd get nothing. If you were the second best, second worst, you get one point and so on. And we do this a bunch of times and we, and we keep track of all the points. And then we eliminate half the decks and repeat this process. So here is sort of the data I got. The first test run, we ran 25 uh, hands, hands, 26 times. These are all the points. These are all the good ranking decks. You see this word break point here. This means every deck under this uh, was not part of the top half, and they're going to be eliminated, right? And then what we're going to do, we're going to double the amount of samples we have, and then we're going to do the same thing again because we want to keep sort of, we want to weed out the weak decks, right, and keep sort of the strong ones around. And so here's another break point as you can see, and then all these decks below the breakpoint will be eliminated. And we'll repeat this process again. This time we're going to do 100 samples, or so sort of increasing the accuracy each time as we get fewer and fewer decks. Um, and the reason I had to do this was because I just ran out of, like, it takes a long time to actually simulate this, so I had to, like, cut the number of decks. I couldn't just run all the decks all the time. Here we go, round four. Even more samples. Another breakpoint. Delete these decks. Round five. We only had two decks left at this point. You could see they're really neck and neck, 348, 347 points. And it turns out these two decks, 9, 5, and 10, 4, were, were pretty close together, and they were hard to sort of tell the difference part, right? And so I said, well, okay, well, why don't we go look at what these decks are? Well, what is 9, 5? And so here's a visual representation of what 9, 5, and 10, 4, excuse me, 10, 4 are. And actually, I'm building the deck right now, and to be honest, they're one card difference. So it was a 42 card deck, 9-5, uh, and it had one of each of these familiars. It played the Photon Thrasher, decided not to play the Rocket Tracer, uh, and it played the Star Rotation Dragon Fiend. And then 10-4 was literally one less, uh, one less of those familiars. That's it. That was the difference. And those two were the best decks. And so that's what my simulation told me. And it was kind of cool to see, you know, how this came about. Um... All right, so we can see these these average scores for these decks are so close. 13.428, 13.429, super, super close. It looks like 9.5 did slightly better, but you can see this this run already for you know, 100,000 samples for these guys took about, mm, well, three hours, I would say. I was doing, you know, lots of sample means, so a little bit more than this. But this, this simulation took about three hours, and so clearly I couldn't do much more than this. It's hard to find a difference. Um, so in conclusion, I want to conclude this video by saying that, well, if you want to run this simulation, you know, you want it for yourself, you know, hey, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I want to talk about sort of what was interesting, what I found interesting. Well, first thing I found interesting was the decks that did the best were not 40 card decks. And I've always been a 40 card deck player, right? So I've always believed in 40 cards. And so this was kind of interesting to me that the 40 card deck was not the best deck. And the reason for this, I think, is because of diminishing returns, right? Uh, we had three separate goals in this deck. We had to the goal to combo, the goal to make as a thought, the goal to draw waterfront. And these goals are sometimes at odds with each other because you need to add non-Crusadia cards to make as a thought. And so... I'm actually going to pull up the hypergeometric calculator here, every deck builder's best friend, and we're going to take a look at what I'm, what I'm talking about here, right? So we're going to start with a deck of 40 cards, you know, standard three of five card hand and one success. We can see that that gives us about a 33, 34% chance of drawing it. We add a fourth card that goes up by about, uh, I'd say, what, seven nine percent Our odds increase by 9%, let's say. But when we add a fifth card, notice this, our odds, we don't get as much of an increase. Well, they only increase by about 8% from 42 to 50, right? If we add a sixth card, they only increase by seven. So as you can see, the more cards we add, we do increase our percentage, but not as much as the previous one. But for example, I'm going to do a little thought experiment here. We're going to increase the population size by one, one extra card, and we only lose 1%. But imagine if that extra card was used for, for an Azathot combo. That would increase the Azathot percentage by well, quite a bit, probably, right? Even though I only value Azathot, a third of what I value, you know, just being able to combo off, it's still super important, right? And so 
um, right, it's still super important. So we've got these goals here, right? And even though, even though we added a car for making us, that, re that reduced our chance of performing the basic combo, it was still worth it because, you know, those cards, just adding a few extra cards, even though it sort of diminishes other stuff, it's, it's more valuable is what I'm trying to say. I know this is complicated stuff, but anyway, in conclusion, pretty cool stuff. I just wanted to show you this, show you guys this. Uh, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you want to use this, leave them in the comments. Have a great Christmas season. And I will see you guys next. Well, happy holidays, right? We got to be politically correct here. Happy holidays.